girl lady gorgeous back at it again with another mother freaking video and today i'm so excited to be doing this video because y'all hmm y'all know why y'all clicked on this video y'all either clicked on this video because y'all want to go past the nasm exam y'all want to know like what is the nasm exam sorry y'all i'm goofy what is nasm cpt and why you should get it if you fail you probably on this video it's a lot of reasons why you're gonna be on this video so today I'm going to be telling you guys how I passed my NASM CPT exam and what it took and the study habits that I used because it was not easy. It was not easy at all. All these videos out here and I'm black so um, for all my black girls that want to become NASM certified personal trainer, here I am. Okay, because it wasn't a lot of videos that of black people. It was a lot of white people. And I really, I really enjoyed their videos. They did, they did good with teaching me stuff like that. Um, some people didn't really help. Some people would just say the basic stuff that you already know and how they passed it and tell their little story behind the scenes or whatever. But what I, what you guys want to know, what I wanted to know when I was watching all these videos, which is going to help you keep watching these videos, keep getting, keeping yourself motivated, is how to pass it. So first, I'm going to give y'all my little background story. So first. Show you guys my certification. Y'all know I was I'm so hyped to have this certification because it actually took some hard work and everybody can't just go past an as an exam. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. This is the paper that you want to have in your hand right now. So my story is I want to become a personal trainer. Well, I am a personal trainer now, but I wanted to become a personal trainer and I wanted to be certified. And NASM is like the most respected certification that you can have, like say if you want to work in the gym or whatnot. So it's really important to get um, the information that you need to be a personal trainer. I don't think you should just go training people without knowing what you're doing. Not saying that you don't know what you're doing, but you want to know the basic information that you should know, like about the body and all of that stuff. So that's why it's important for you to study for this. I studied for about a month, like after I paid for it. About a month later, I was studying that whole month and I read chapter by chapter. I read page, page by page. I read the whole book, okay? It was on my computer. I didn't really put two and two together about how long it was. People would be saying how it was long and stuff, but once you dedicate to something, I read the whole book, page by page. So what happened was I read about from chapter one to chapter 10, I read it thoroughly and took all the exams and stuff and that was good but then i started rushing so i gave myself a deadline I'm like i'm gonna take this by the end of this month because i want my certification by the end of the month or whatever so i can do my photo shoot and i can get my business and stuff going so basically i was rushing myself so do not rush you guys into taking this test if you're not prepared so i was rushing because reading all the chapters because i looked at videos and they were just saying just read the book and you should know how to you know what the answers are going to be or whatever false you can't just read through the book and know everything there's certain things that you need to know so after i got to like chapter 10 or 13 i was just skimming through like i was going through to the highlighted things and like reading it and studying it but no that's not what you you gotta read this whole book thoroughly and after you read it if you don't want to read it thoroughly here's the other information after you read it the most important chapters are six seven 12 14 and i think it's 2021 20 21 yeah i'm gonna make sure but i'm having on the screen those are the chapters that you're going to want to study for this test because those chapters are the most important the opt module the the, the um five phases of the opt module so you have stabilization you have strength then you have um muscular endurance then you have hypertrophy um which is the third the third one i think so and then you have um did i say that wrong let me look because i don't want to be giving y'all false information y'all studying for this test i have all of these papers that i'm going to show you guys so you can pass i'm giving y'all real deal information y'all you have stabilization, strength, endurance. Then you have hypertrophy training. Then you have maximal strength training. 
And then of course you have power, which is the last one. Yeah. So that's how you want to think about it. Um, I got to give y'all so much information. I don't even know where to start. So I felt my first time because I was rushing and I didn't search up the real deal important information and these people don't tell you the real deal things that they about. You gotta study OPT module or whatever. But you really have to focus on these muscles. Um, they're gonna tell you, I'm not just reading the paper because I'm not trying to ramble. But the most important things that I had on my test, which you don't have, everything's not gonna be the same for everybody. So it's okay for me to tell you guys it's not cheating or anything. But the um, things I had on my test was, especially on my first one, which is why I should have passed because it was, I'm not gonna say easy, but if I would've knew the information, I would've had a better grade for sure. It was, and make sure you guys get your American Red Cross or whatever um, CPR. This, this is what, ooh, this is what you guys need to know. You need to know the trans theoretical model, the five stages or whatever. Pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance. So y'all can go on the internet, y'all can print out all these pages, just type in um, the NASM, um, NASM, like the important information for NASM, whatever, and all these papers will pop up, and I think y'all should print them all out like I did. So for pre-contemplation, client does not intend to change behavior in the next six months. Contemplation, client wants to change behavior in the next six months but does not act. Preparation, client intends to change behavior within 30 days. So for those first three, the client isn't doing anything at all. So remember that, the client isn't doing anything. So if it be like the client is working out or whatever, that means these three phases are not in there. It's either action or maintenance. If the client is talking about working out, looking forward to working out, that is going to be preparation because the client intends to change the behavior within the 30 days, but they still haven't did any type of workouts. Contemplation. Client wants to change behavior in the next six months, but does not act. So they want to change their behavior, but they're not doing anything about it. They're not going to a coach and being like, oh, I want to do this, or I want to do that, or looking for a partner. They're not doing none of that. Pre-contemplation, they're not even starting to exercise. They, the client does not intend to change behavior in the next six months. And then you go to action. I wish I could teach you guys everything, <laughs> but this video will be so long. Then you go to action. The client has changed from unhealthy to healthy behavior within the past 30 days, which means they have started working out and they have changed from not doing anything to working out. Maintenance means they've been keeping up with their exercise for at least more than six months for maintenance. So it's going to say in the question for the answer, it's going to say the client has been working out for more than six months or six months. What is it? And tell me, y'all, this is this was really important. If y'all want to screenshot it or not, I was trying to screenshot stuff in people videos that was moving too fast. Um, another thing, um, cut to the chase. You want to take those quizzes that they have. I took those quizzes multiple times before I took the, the my second exam so I could pass because I felt like I was really prepared. You're going to know when you're prepared for the exam. You have those, all those quizzes at the end of all those chapters are very important. Those, um, the midterm and I think it's like four separate ones, but all those quizzes in between for each chapter and yeah, am I saying it right? Yeah, for each chapter. And you know how you have six modules or whatever? Yeah, for each one of those, it's going to be like a big exam. It's like 50 questions at the end. You want to take those. And you want to study what you get wrong. You want to keep taking them until you get at least a 75 or higher. Then you send an 80 or higher, which is good. But if you want to take the exam like I did, as soon as you start seeing that you're doing good and stuff like that, I did get 80s and stuff on a lot of my stuff, but not all of them. Because people say get 80s on all of them. No, get at least a 75 or higher on all of them. And make sure you know what you got wrong. And so when you take the quiz, they tell you what you got wrong. Don't just take another quiz trying to hurry up and get an A. That's not why you're taking the quizzes. Take the quiz, see what you got wrong. And when you take the next one, you'll be like, oh, the same question is in here. I already have the answer because I studied it. Boom. So pass those quizzes. 
And when you're done with the whole book and you pass those quizzes, then you want to go on to the um the exam, the practice exam. You want to take the practice exam. My tail should have knew that I wasn't ready. The reason why I did took the first one was because I didn't know you had to pay two hundred dollars. If you fail this exam, you have to pay two hundred extra dollars just to retake it, and you have to wait like uh two weeks or something like that. So you want to pass in your first go round. So if you see that you're not passing the practice exam, don't think you're going to get to this exam. You're going to be lucky or whatever and pass the real exam because you're not. Okay? You're not. I got like 50s and stuff. And I think, yeah, I think I got like 50s, 60s. So I should have known I'm going to pass the exam, but I just tried it because I was taking, I waited till the day of my freaking final exam to take the practice, which was dumb. So don't do that, y'all. Please don't do that. Once you see that you get at least a 75% or higher and you pass the practice exam and you're passing those quizzes, you know you're ready. You'll know that you're ready to take the um the exam or whatever. So so you got the um five stages, pre-contemplation, all of that. You got the five stages. Then you want to know your overactive muscles, your underactive muscles. You want to know those muscles because they're going to ask you questions about, okay, the client is doing this exercise or this exercise, and you want to kind of know, like, the different exercises. So, if the client's doing this, what muscles are overactive? If the client's doing this, what muscles are underactive? They're really going to ask you about the, um, I think it's called, what is it called? Um, the resistance training and stuff. So, um, what is the lower body syndrome? It's going to be lower body syndrome that you need to know a lot of. Upper body syndrome, you need to know everything about the upper body syndrome, the lower body syndrome, and the, um, the, um, you know the thing where their legs cross at the bottom? I have the stuff, y'all. Hold up. I'm actually going to go through all of these papers in a few seconds, so, yeah. So, I'm going to tell y'all what I was just telling y'all guys about, but before then, I want to tell y'all, whatever you get wrong, you can write it down on pieces of paper. I wrote all of this stuff down, things I got wrong, so you can just study. This was me rambling before my um, first exam when I failed. <laughs> I was writing down stuff I got wrong and studying, but that didn't work because you got access to this information and know it. So, we we'll go through a couple things that's important. All of these papers are important. So all acute variables are interdependent. Example, increasing load, fewer numbers of reps can be performed. Research shows training in a specific rep range. Da 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 da, you don't even know that. What you need to know is muscular endurance and stabilization, which is phase one and phase two, is best achieved by performing 12 to 20 reps at 50 to 70 percent one RM. 50 to 70 percent. Then you got your third phase, hypertrophy. Is your third phase of the OPT module. Hypertrophy best achieved using 6 to 12 reps at 75 to 85% 1 RM. Okay, so you see that it's increasing. Then you got maximal strength training. You get to maximal strength training, you know that you're going to reach 100% 1 RM. So maximal strength training is achieved from 1 to 5 reps at 85 to 100 1 RM. So Notice that the 1RM is increasing when it goes from the first phase to the fourth phase. And notice that the reps are decreasing because you're increasing rate and endurance. So the reps are decreasing from stabilization, starting at 12 to 20, then you go to 6 to 12, then you go to 1 to 5 for maximum strength training. So when you're lifting weights and stuff, 1 to 5 reps. And then when you go to powers, 1 to 10 reps. Power is goes down to 30 to 45 percent one RM, so that's the only thing that goes down. Once you get the power, you go down because think about it you're using power and stuff like that, so it's more strength. So the less reps and stuff you're going to do, so it's one to ten reps and 30 to 45 percent one RM. And you use plyometric and dynamic structure for that one. Um, Okay, so it says at the bottom, beginning phases of OPT consists of high rep schemes necessary to build proper connective tissue. Um, common mistake of advanced clients is to not use a planned training program, whatever, whatever, whatever. Already said you need to have the CPR. Um, sets, you need to know what a set is. Um, 
Muscular endurance stabilization, the stuff I already just read to you. You need to know how many seconds of rest. That's going to be up there. How many seconds of rest between exercises and for phase one, for phase two, for phase three. So muscular endurance and stabilization, phase one and two, 90 seconds of zero to 90 seconds of rest. Hypertrophy, zero to 60 seconds of rest. Maximum strength, three to five minutes of rest. Power, three to five minutes. So maximum and power is three to five minutes because you're using more muscle and stuff like that. So your muscles need to have time to rest before you do go into the next exercise or whatever, set, whatever. Okay. Um, 40 seconds of rest gives you, this is what NASM says, 40 seconds of rest gives you 75% of ATP and PC, which means bringing you back to normal heart rate or whatever. Um, 20 to 30 seconds of rest allows 50% is what they say, allows 50% recovery of ATP so it's 50 to 75 60 seconds to 85 seconds gives you 90% ATP and PC and then once you get to minutes three minutes gives you 100 it's common sense once you get to minutes just know it's giving you 100 um, of rest that's all you need to know to remember you need to know posterior lateral and anterior you need to know um so overhead squat assessment you need to know um your third toe in line with your third toe it's gonna ask you so many questions about that everything's in line with your th second and third toes or whatever your knees your feet are pointed straight out um your knees are not over or whatever and your knees are in line with your feet second and third toe whatever they ask you your shoulders are in line just make everything is just in line okay i'm gonna ask you everything is in line um Overhead squat assessment, you want to look for because they're going to ask you what's wrong with this person and whatever, or what can you say to this person to fix them? They're, if their foot is turning out, move inwards, move outward. Um, popular overactive, like your soleus, gastrocnemius, bicep femurus, all of this stuff is going to be important. So, this is how I, this is the easy stuff. Adductors, none of our adductors are overactive. Adductors are overactive, labium dorsi is overactive. Um, um what's the other ones oh gluteus medius and gluteus maximus is going to be up there it's always underactive underactive muscles then you need to know your global muscles and your local muscles you need to know that stuff I'm not, i can't go through everything because it's not enough time but if y'all want me to do another video with everything that i learned and what you need for this test you need to know where everything's located so print out as many pictures as you can like I said, you need to know the upper cross syndrome. You need to know the lower cross syndrome. And y'all, y'all, y'all would be surprised. Y'all would be thinking, oh, I know the upper cross syndrome, oh, I know the lower cross syndrome, but then get you'll get pronation distortion syndrome and lower cross syndrome mixed up during the test. Lower cross syndrome is foot pronation, knee flexion, internal rotation, reduction of the knees. Lower cross syndrome is in increased lumbar lordosis, anterior pelvic tilt because they're going to say increased lumbar lordosis, posterior pelvic tilt is anterior pelvic tilt for the lower cross syndrome. And you need to know the overactive muscles. A lot of these are the same from a lot of them. Gastrocnemia, soleus, hip flexor complex, adductors, latimus dorsi, and erector spinning. Overactive and underactive is not going to change between the syndromes. They're always going to be the same. So it's never going to change. So uh, um, underactive, you have the anterior tibialis. tibialis. So whenever you see tibialis, know that that's a uh, um, underactive muscle. And gluteus maximus and gluteus medius. I already told you about that. It's going to be a lot of questions. That's always underactive whenever whatever the syndrome is. Transverse abdominis and internal oblique. I already told y'all about pronation distortion. Y'all needed to know that. Those are those are important. You need to know them for the test. Period. That's all I'm gonna say. Local global global muscles. You need to know eccentric phase. That's loading phase. So eccentric. I'm doing a squat. I'm going down. Amortization. I'm right here. I'm already down. And I'm staying right here. Concentric. Booms. You're using that energy to come back up. 
or whatever. So you need to know eccentric, amortization, concentric. So you need to know all of those, pyometric, um, need to know it, okay, when they ask you. You need to know your SAQ, speed, agility, and quickness. You need to know that agility, they're going to be like, um, dang, I forgot what they kept saying for agility. But if you keep take, taking the quizzes, you'll know what I'm talking about. You need to know youth. What do you, How long does youth training, agility for speed or whatever, how long all of that? Because they're going to ask you those questions. You need to know um, the tempo for eccentric, isometric, whole concentric. You need to know the macro cycle, the meso cycle, and the micro cycle. Y'all, I'm giving y'all the test right now. Like, I'm giving y'all all the information that y'all need to know. So, all y'all need to do is go and study. Period. The four P's of marketing, product, price, place, and promotion. You have to know that because they're going to ask you that. Local muscles and global muscles. I already told y'all. I already told y'all that. You need to know where everything is at. In the body. That's going to be on the test. Upper cross syndrome. Upper cross syndrome. Okay. I think that's it. I already said the overactive and underactive. This is how I studied. Circle the important things that are on the um syndromes. That's all you need to know. You don't need to know the extra stuff. So everything I have up here that has lines and stuff on it or words beside it, it was upside down. That is what you're going to need to know. It was upside down. So gastrocnemia is overactive, soleus, overactive, adductors, overactive, Latimus Dorsey. Um, Latimus Dorsey is overactive. Erector spinae is overactive. Upper trapezius, when you hear the word trapezius, overactive. Scapulae, levator, overactive. Stomach the master, they're not going to ask you that. Scalenes, they're not going to really ask you that. Anterior tibialis, whenever you see tibialis, underactive. Posterior, anterior, same thing to me. Underactive. Whenever you hear medius maximus, know that that is over, I mean, underactive. Underactive. Okay? Yeah. Multifetus is underactive. Internal oblique is underactive. And the rhomboids, it's like something with your shoulders, your posterior delta is all underactive. And middle and lower trapezius, whenever you hear trapezius, like I said, it's underactive. So, I don't went through that with y'all. I don't went through that. I don't went through all of this. So, I think. I'm going to learn. Just another part for the body, like I said. Um, correct the flexibility, self myofascial release. You need to know what type of um, stretching you need to be to do for each of the phases. So, for phase one and phase two, I think you use self myofascial release and static stretching. Um, active flexibility, self module. I don't know how to say the word myofascial release, active isolated stretching, functional flexibility, self myofascial release, and dynamic stretching. So, you use the self myofascial for each one. And dynamic stretching goes with like power, I think. I don't know. But yeah. Yep, 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 yep. You need to know that. You need to know about agonists, which is your prime mover, synergist, assists the prime mover, stabilizers, stabilize while prime mover and synergist work, antagonist, oppose prime mover. Single set, multi set, super set, drop sets. You need to know all of these. So study. Study, write it down so you can remember, highlight, you can remember. All of that, you need to know. RDD, did all of this. Foot and ankle, external rotation, interior. This is for like the movement compensations because they're going to ask you how to fix it. So, knee, adduction, lateral, PHC, excessive forward lean, lower back arches. Those are things that you have to correct when people are doing the wrong things. Arms fall forward, that's lateral. Things that you're gonna have to correct. So, yeah, I can't go over everything. Y'all can screenshot it or whatever. Yeah. Frontal sagittal transverse planes, you need to know that so you can know where things are or what. If they're doing a freaking lunge, that's gonna be frontal plane. If they're doing, no. Transverse, just know that's your rotate, you're using rotation. Sagittal, just know it's biceps between the whole body from left to right. And, um, dang. Oh, blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry, y'all. 
I don't want to give y'all the wrong information. But frontal, just know you can only move side to side, I think. It shows you on the um chapter, it's going to show you it's going to have a mirror or whatever. Just act like it's a mirror. You can only go front and backwards and then side to go right from left or it's backwards. I don't know which one. I forgot. Which, it's either the frontal is you only can do lunges or whatever up and back and side to is right from left. So, or it's the opposite of what I just said. So you need to know all your phases. Like I said, the important information. Do not study all of this. Intensity you can study, tempo you can study, 421 is always for stabilization. XXX you don't know for maximum strength and power always. Supersets is 202 or it's going to be 421. Really 202 though. So print out all these papers, stabilize for phase one, phase two, all of them. And study the, um, study the information. Only thing you really need to know is the resistance part for all of them. And that is it. Okay. Another thing that helped me tons, tons of why I passed my test. Training Academy. I bought this. If you fail the NASM exam after completing this whole study guide, you fill in the blank on the study guide and that's how you remember the information because you actually have to write the answers down for each of the questions. And if you fail, they give you your money back. So why not? Why not buy it? If you pass, you don't get your money back, but at least you pass the test because of this. You know what I'm saying? This is going to help you pass and it doesn't take a long time to fill in the information. So if you have it on the computer like I do and you can't find an answer, which I, I suggest you first you look throughout the chapter or whatever, skip or whatever through it just to see the information. Like you'll get to glance on the other information that's important too. After you, um, I, I suggest you do this after you do the whole, um, after you read the whole book or whatever, then you want to do this and get the answers. If you can't find the answer, you really, really can't find it. Go and click on the, it's like a highlighter where you can type in a word that's like say it says what is chronic disease type in chronic disease and it'll go to the chapter that you need to go to to get the answer so training academy helped me and it's this white man on youtube he's super crazy but he's super funny and i forgot his name but i will have it right in this video for you guys to watch his videos he really helped me and told me what i needed to study for this test that was important and he's super funny so yeah i'm gonna put him in here yeah thank you guys for watching this video make sure you go like comment and subscribe and i hope you guys learned something from this video i hope i help and i hope you guys pass the test like i did and i'll see you guys in the next one Deuces.